I am Rolf Klesen, Patent Attorney and Partner at Michalski Hüttern and Partner in Düsseldorf, Germany. And I am joined today by Professor Alois Hüttermann. He is also partner of the firm, founding partner, and he is also an expert on the UPC system, the Unified Patent Court system. Thank you for being on the show, Alois. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure. Okay, can you very briefly explain what the UPC is? Today we talk about the opt out out of the UPC system and to understand this better, maybe briefly explain what the UPC system is. Yeah, I would try it very briefly, though that's really hard. Well, um, the UPC system consists of two parts. The first one is the uh, unitary patent. And this is the easy one. Um, instead of um, validating European patents in the future one by one, you can choose, um, let's say, a, a package, um, 17 countries in the, and in the future, maybe even more, um, and you can validate them all in one. And this is the unitary patent. But we'll, we'll not talk about this today. Uh, we'll talk about the more complicated thing, and this is the unified patent court. The Unified Patent Court is a newly founded court. It's actually the first real pan-European court. Um, and this court will be competent um, for infringement and also nullity of European patents. It will also be, um, of course, um, in, uh, competent for infringement and nullity of e unitary patents, but these are yet to come. But um, more important is that this court um, is competent also for patents that have been granted even five years or 10 years ago. And some of them may be really important for their owners. Right. And so um, this patent court is now um, responsible for all these patents. And some people might be hesitant to uh, expose all their patents to this new court system and therefore there is an um, instrument called the opt-out. Tell us more what the opt-out really is. In order to make the shift to the new system more easier for patent owners, um, there is an article in the underlying agreement that allows patent owners to opt out, which means that for a given patent, um, the current system of national infringement and national nullity um, still um, is to be adopted. And um, this is so that, um, yeah, the, 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 the patent com community um, maybe accepts the UPC more easily. Okay, so um, so you can opt out all the patents out of the system um, and probably there is a time limit to do so, right? Yes. Well, actually, there are two time limits. So there's a, a first time limit, and this is uh, seven years after the UPC is in force. Well, technically speaking, is it's six years, 11 months, because you have to file your opt-out request one month before the deadline. This deadline can be prolonged um, for another seven years once. Um, so this is quite a long time. Um, there's um, a second deadline. and But this deadline is not written anywhere. But um, once there is an action either out of the patent or against the patent, you cannot opt out anymore. So, of course, when you're a patent owner and you litigate a patent, then it's in your hands. So you have made the decision whether you want to go with UPC or not before. But um, this also goes for nullity actions. So if a competitor files a nullity actions again, before the UPC against your patent, then an opt-out is ruled out. Um, and this leads us now to a very important thing, which is 
currently the UPC is in preparation, but um, there will be a time, it's not clear when, but it will be in a few months, um, when there is a certain period, it's called the sunrise period, where you can already opt out, but the UPC is not yet in force. Um, why is this so? Because um, in the preparation of the UPC, there was um, yeah, great concern, especially by the pharma industry, that on day one, when the UPC starts, um, um, some generic companies or competitor might file nullity actions against their crown jewel patents. Whereas on the same day, the pharma companies wanted to opt out. So there would be like a race to the courthouse. And in order to prevent that, um, it was decided that you can preemptively opt out. So that then on day one, the, your patent is out of the system and the generic companies or the competitors or whoever cannot attack you. Um, the this period will not be very long. It will be like two or three months. And when it will start is not decided yet. Probably it's going to be like the last three months um, before the UPC comes into force. Okay, so we have to stay tuned and uh... The listeners to this and the viewers of this video, they might want to subscribe to our newsletter because we will announce this date and the deadlines and yeah. also we will um, support our subscribers with new information about the UPC system. But um, um, another question was, um, what are the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, opting out? So why should people opt out their patents or why should they not opt out their patents? Well, um, let's start with the advantages of opting out. So the one clear advantage is that you have security. So if you don't trust the UPC, if you are of the opinion, well, maybe in the long run they will do good, but in, at first you never know, um, then you can opt out. Um, one should say that the opt out is cost free um, well, it's not as easy as one might think. So you cannot um, take an Excel sheet or whatever and, 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 and upload it somewhere. You have to do it patent by patent. But um, the, the relative costs for an opt-out are not too high. And you can revert it once. So if you see after two or three years, well, we is a good thing, then you can opt in all of your patents, and then you are in the system again. Um, the disadvantages are, of course, that once you have opted out, um, you cannot litigate your patent in parallel before the UPC. You have to do it country by country. That's the big advantage of the UPC. Um, another disadvantage is more, I would say, like a yeah, philosophical one. Um, one should be aware that in the long run, um, the UPC is going to be the venue you have to go to once the European patent has granted you a patent. Um, so if the EPO gives you a patent, you have to go to the UPC. Um, but if you take it a closer look at the EPO, uh, then you will see that the most important decisions were made really early. So the problem solution approach for inventive step, the um, let's see, very hard requirements, something that drives our US colleagues nuts when it comes to amending your patent. The two list principle, for instance, I'm a chemist that's essential for me, all of that, um, is from the first three years um, when appeal decisions were a, being made at the EPO. So if you decide, well, I want to stay out for now, let's see how it goes, 
it means that the train will run without you. And once you have to get on that train, um, you cannot influence things anymore. I mean, of course, it, when you're a plaintiff, you're not the judge. You will not decide. But at least you can bring forward some arguments and say, look, we are of the opinion it should be like this. You can try to influence the court. Uh, but if you don't do that, others might. Then you have to live with the result. Um, so that's something that should not be underestimated. Well, one should also be aware that all of the household names, uh, when it comes to judges, European-wide, most of them will be at the UPC because all of them have applied there simply because the UPC is the place where in the future the action will be. So it can be that the quality of the UPC is very high. Um, the only factor um, that could speak pro and opt out, in my opinion, is maybe the costs. Um, at the UPC, um, you have to reimburse um, the other party and pay their attorneys if you lose. Um, similar as in Germany, but unlike as in Germany, there's no fixed system. In Germany, we have a law called FRG, um, which basically means that once you know the value of dispute, you can um, make click and then you know by the cent how much you're going to pay if you lose. Of course, if you win, you don't have to. Instead, the other party must reimburse you. Um, but at the UPC, we don't have such a system. What we have is a ceiling. So there's a cost ceiling, a, a maximum costs. Um, but this ceiling is, frankly speaking, ridiculously high. So compared to Germany, if you have the same value of dispute, it's sometimes factor 10. And in my opinion, that's too much. Um, well, that's, let's say, um, 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 a remainder of the time the UK was supposed to be part of the UPC system. Um, we all know that in the UK, patent litigation is ridiculously expensive. And, and so this ceiling still is influenced by that. I don't know well, whether this is going to be changed. At the moment, this is all um, preliminary. But it could be that um, there's the danger that UPC proceedings are much more costly than German proceedings. And this could be, a way, I think, a proper reason to stay out of the UPC, at least initially, and to see what the UPC makes out of costs. Because the UPC decides in the end. Right. Uh, but at least uh, seven years from now, uh, everyone has to live with the high costs of the UPC. So. Yeah, why not join now to to be able to steer the system a little better than joining later? <laughs> yeah, well, I hope I hope that the UPC um, will not apply this cost ceiling and they, that they make um, reasonable uh, decisions when it comes to cost. But of course, I cannot guarantee nobody can. Right. So uh, could be that. Um, um, some companies say, well, let's get out for now and see how it goes. And then eventually or possibly we can go back, back in. Right. So we talked a lot about uh, the UPC system and opting out of the UPC system, uh, system, the reasons for and against opting out. Be, we were only able to really scratch the surface of this very complicated topic. If people want to know more about this topic, where can they go? Well, I mean, of course, they can uh, write me an email. They can go to our homepage. We have uh, a lot of videos, also a lot of videos coming up. Um, we have uh, books and presentation. Um, so, I mean, I can safely advertise this book because it's sold out. But the second edition is in preparation. And also there's a commentary um, that I was um, asked to co-edit. So, um, yeah, 
visit our homepage from time to time and then you can get more information. And maybe subscribe to the newsletter where we are yeah. sending out information about a new system coming up. So thank you very much for uh, being part of this video, Alois. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And yeah, well, hope to uh, be back here soon again. Yes, we will have a lot of videos about the UPC system in the future, I guess. It's an important topic. It's completely changing the litigation landscape in Europe and it's important. So we have to um, record a lot of new videos to explain this new system and yeah, see how, what the future brings. Thank you for being Look here. Thank you again.